So I'm delighted to welcome today a really, really bright spark, Shane and Melissa, who is a, an RN nurse, but you're more than that, uh, Shana, aren't you? Far, far more than that. By the age of 26, you had a gazillion qualifications under your belt. So tell us tell us what you do now and how you got to, to what you're doing. Sure. I, I think, um, actually, I was like 22 when I had a couple of my nursing licenses and a couple of my degrees. And now, fast forward, I have four nursing licenses. And... Um, I've been a registered nurse over 30 years now. I'm a nationally board certified nurse practitioner. I am licensed as both an adult and a pediatric nurse practitioner. So I truly treat every age from the premature infant to the 100 plus year old. And um, I'm more of an holistic, intuitive holistic healer. When people find out about me after the doctors and the specialists couldn't help them, and then I make them feel better <laughs> a lot of times without medications, then they're like, oh my God. God, where have you been? <laughs> and then when their doctors see their success stories, then their doctors reach out to me and had to know what I do. And then their doctors sometimes become my clients. Ah, interesting. So, yes, it's a, it's a different world. Like 30 years ago, most of the doctors wouldn't look at a nurse like that, you know, for advice. But now to have a lot of doctors and specialists come to me as, you know, their healthcare provider, it's, it's a the world <laughs> it's a really really true accolade to, to what you do so when you say four licenses what do you mean so in the UK you're a nurse or you're a nurse you know oh you're... so what what, what yes. do you mean? okay so I before I graduated nursing school I took my licensed practical nursing exam and I passed that. And then when I graduated, I took my registered nurse, my RN. So I got my LPN, then my LRN. Then um, I went right back for my bachelor's of nursing and then my master's and, and post-master's degree. And so after my RN and the bachelor's of nursing, then I went back for my adult uh, nurse practitioner license, which is a higher license where I can prescribe the medications and have my own practice. So I went back for my nurse practitioner license and I graduated a semester early because I didn't want to graduate with everyone trying to get a job at the same time. And then I sat for the national boards and I got nationally board certified. It shows them up to the national standard here in the US. And that in order to maintain that national status, you have to show continuing education credits every few years to show that you're keeping up on the latest treatments and tests and medications. So I've maintained my national board certification now for it's my third decade without any lapse. And then I decided to go back and get my post-master's degree as a pediatric nurse practitioner. So because here in the U.S. where I'm from, you can be a nurse practitioner in a certain area. And I just, I, you know, like parents would ask me like, oh, can you see my five-year-old? <laughs> I'd be like, hold on, let me get another degree and then I'll come back, another license. So um my four licenses, my LPN, my RN, my adult nurse practitioner, and my pediatric nurse practitioner. Well, so I, I, I had no idea that you, you needed to be, <laughs> um, what do you call it, licensed in so many different areas over there, which is a, is it a gimmick? Is it another one of a, you know? Yes. <laughs> yes and just... no. <laughs> yeah, licensing is good to show, you know, that, that we're trained adequately and that we pass certain tests. But of course, it, it, there is money making behind it as well. Like, let's be real. Yeah. <laughs> you know, here you need a license to go fishing in your lakes. So. <laughs> yeah. We have that as well. It's ridiculous, isn't it? The whole thing is a big scam. So um, are you, I mean, do you work in a hospital now or do you work independently? How, how, what does your life look like? Okay. I've worked over the past three decades in every area. I've done hospice, home care, ventilators, dialysis, hospitals, drug rehabs, physical rehabs, like you name it, nursing homes. Um, now I predominantly do visits kind of like this on a Zoom like video, where I have a lot of clients in different states, countries, and continents now that I can just get them on an appointment like this. And even my local clients love it because they don't have to spend an hour commuting each way, you know, in a contagious, infectious waiting room with people that are sick. Like, you know, I have them wait less than one minute on in the waiting room, my virtual waiting room. So it's all virtual like this. And it's great because say, 
you know, your mom needs a visit with me and she's in another country or a different part of your country. You can get on the meeting with her at the same time. So two minds are better than one. Maybe her memory is not so good and you can ask other questions and take notes. So I find it, it's, it's very advantageous. And I started doing that right before the pandemic. So I was kind of a little bit ahead of the curve. Brilliant, brilliant. Yeah. So how do you how do you prescribe that if you're if you've got people on different con continents? How do you prescribe? Oh, well, my prescribing I try to keep here, <laughs> but in other countries, sometimes a lot of the medications we have as prescriptions here they don't need a prescription for. You know, if you go to Mexico, it's like over the counter there. <laughs> What's a prescription here? So it's not necessarily, and, and yeah, I work with people in other countries. They'll tell me what medications they're on. And I kind of have to do a little translation to figure out what the U.S. drug is. But yeah, so the prescribing is mostly is here in the U.S., you know. Oh, OK. And um, tell us about your grandma, um, you, your grandma oh. up and the fact that she she did far, far better than than everybody else in, in terms of health care and, and longevity. You did some research on me, didn't you? Well, kudos yeah. to you. Okay, well, my grandma, God rest her soul, she raised me. She grew up uh, a minority, divorced parents, poor during the last pandemic, and then survived the Great Depression. And she still graduated school two years earlier. So, you know, these kids nowadays have an excuse. My mom was this, my dad was that. And always have an excuse for why they're not doing good in life. Look at my grandma, poor minority divorced parents <laughs> during the Great Depression and graduated high school two years early. And then my grandpa was a pharmacist, but grandma was the so opposite. She, I learned, she taught the, the best way possible by example, right? She didn't say, you do this, you do that. I would start seeing these things. She would always get food and say, you know, no salt, please. Or she would go to a special place and have them make peanut butter for her from scratch where they didn't put the salt in it. And then in later years, I would start going to health class and I was realizing that health makes you keep the water, which raises your blood pressure. So I would put the pieces together. She was watching her diet so she didn't need a blood pressure pill. And then I would see she would eat a banana every day because the banana had the potassium and is a little bit of a natural diuretic. So I would start seeing these things and she was using food as medicinal purposes back, I'm gonna date myself in the seventies. And then I would see that all of her siblings had diabetes and she watched what she ate, stayed skinny and never developed diabetes. So that was one of the first instances that I realized we can actually decide if our family history for certain genes is going to be expressed or not. People are only starting to talk about this now, but this was in the 70s I learned that from her. You know, her siblings didn't watch what they ate, weren't skinny because they didn't watch what they ate, developed diabetes. Grandma watched what she ate, stayed skinny, never developed it. So I knew then that even though we have a family tendency, we can decide if a gene's going to be expressed or not by what we do and what we put in our body. So, you know, people are talking about this now. My grandma was so far ahead of the time. And then I learned it from her. So I'm kind of ahead of the curve. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, oh and I, can I interject one more thing? I don't know. Maybe this is the point you were talking about, because I don't know what your research showed. But did you hear about my grandma walking again? Is that what yes. you said? Um, yes. Oh! I was going to say, and there's more. So Yes. So, so yes. Um, she raised me, so we used to live together. In college, I moved out. And then... Um, Right. As I was graduating, she was I found out she was no longer walking again. So I said, that's it. We're going to live together. I'm going to take care of you the way you took care of me. So I literally back then, this is in the early 90s. I carried her into the doctor's office, not like every other person had a wheelchair, right? They weren't around. So I carried her in and the doctor looked at her like eh, she's 79, you know, and I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> she said to me. And she, she, now she looked up to me for two reasons. She had osteoporosis, so her height, her height was a little shorter. But also, like, I'm the brand new nurse, so she's looking up to me and she's asking me, do you think I'll ever walk again? And I'm like, whoa, I'm 21 years old. I'm a brand new nurse. I don't even have experience yet. This is a big weight on me. And I'm thinking, 
I'm thinking if I get to the cause, I can stop the progression. I can reverse it and get her walking again. So I thought about it. I'm like, yes, you're going to walk again. And I really believe it's because I gave her that belief that then we tried and did the consistent action steps and just never, ever quit where the doctors, they're just like, ah, she's 79. And I'm like, that, that, no, no, she's only 79. Right? <laughs> I'm like, she's only 79. So because I think I gave her the belief that then we put the action. If I didn't give her that belief, she would have never tried and done it again. So then we did act, you know, steps. She was, she was um, stiff from not moving so much. So I did stretching exercises every day. She was weak from not walking that I strengthened her every day. And, you know, then we, we got her sitting balance and then, you know, I'd get her standing and then I'd, I'd put, you know, have her go a little further and a little further and then without the walker, then without the cane. And so eventually she was walking, no cane, no walker, no, no nothing. And I was a brand new grad. I didn't even have experience. Now, mind you, in the 90s here in the U.S., oh, sorry, in the 90s in the U.S. where I'm from, there is back then there was you didn't send people to physical therapy like they do today right you get a little spray and you go to physical therapy that no i was making up exercises to strengthen strengthen i was putting like a can in each arm and doing curls and like the, <laughs> i don't even know how i thought of these things i just thought what what can she do and okay let's do more repetitions today or a little heavier can you know um worked <laughs> so, believe to achieve and never ever quit that's what I gotta say and can absolutely believe, yes the, the the belief that the clients that I work with and um, a lot of them have cancer or very serious conditions and I can tell you those who are going to recover and I'm sure you you know the same you can mm -hmm. tell by the attitude by the body language the way people conduct themselves the language that they use um, some people believe that they're going to get better and they do. And some people believe that, you know, they've got a time limit, especially yes. if they've been given a date by the doctor or you've got two months, three months, a year, whatever. That's crazy. We should not have expiration dates on us. We're not food here. Come on. Yeah. And yeah. here, I don't know. I've heard stories where people were misdiagnosed cancer didn't have it passed away and they got the wrong biopsy results. Yeah, I have that all the time. I just, um, one lady, she's just had surgery for a condition that she was diagnosed with two years ago and she's had all kinds of problems and she's had surgery and the there's no evidence of that condition that she had the surgery for. So there's something wrong, but not what was diagnosed. I, I, get, I hear yes. this all the time. And I like to say, um, I like to tell, well, I don't know if this word is going to capture in filters, maybe uh, the real story. Okay. Put it that way <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because that T word might get me in trouble, but um, sometimes here in the U S especially it's more of a moneymaker. Sometimes the surgeons will operate and they could tell the person, listen, why don't you watch your weight, keep your weight down. Maybe you won't have that pressure on your knees and need a total knee replacement. Yeah. And sometimes meniscal tears, like I had a tear in my knee and I didn't have a surgical repair and I'm fine now. I have a torn meniscus and a, and a ligament and I could still ski. <laughs> I haven't lately though, but um, I think sometimes it's more of a money maker than it needs to be. And sometimes the surgeons, I'm not saying they're not all like that, but sometimes that surgeon doesn't really have to do that surgery yeah. and is just being the best salesperson there is. Yeah, absolutely. And of course the hospital gets paid for whatever the procedure yes. is. Yes. Um, and I, I learned this years ago. I had I had stage four cancer uh, seven years ago, uh, eight years ago now, and I was given less than a year to live. And um, I wasn't having any of it. And I, I beat it in three months. So that's partly why I help other people who's been there, done that, that's, and all the rest of it. Yes, that's awesome. And I've been in heart failure too, full blown heart, full blown heart failure. And my specialist at the time, I'm not going to say his name, <laughs> although I'd like to, um, he's like, well, we're going to put you in what they call cardiac rehab, right? That means you just walk on a treadmill with some monitors. And I'm like, for me, in my situation, everyone's different. I'm like, that to me was not going to get me out of heart failure. It was not going to slow down the progression. It was not going to reverse the progression. 
what's the point of that? <laughs> if you're not stopping my progression, you're not reversing it, but you're making tons of money off me three times a week walking on a treadmill with a monitor. <laughs> I'm like, uh, no, thank you. And I said, Doc, with all due respect, we have to get to the cause because if we get to the cause, we can stop the progression from getting worse. Like I'm getting worse at this point. And he's like, listen, and this is the heart specialist. He's like 95% of all my patients, I never find the cause. I'm sorry, if your healthcare provider is not getting you yeah. healthy, you need to fire them. So I yeah. fired my doctor at the time. I'm like, you have one body part to do. <laughs> I'm only giving you the one part and you can't do it. Like, no, so that's my thing. If your healthcare provider is not getting you healthy, get a different healthcare provider. Yeah. Because if you have a contractor in your house and you don't like the work they're doing, they're fired. People need to realize they have the power to fire their provider, you know, Yeah, absolutely. or look for a healthy alternative. You know, if they like their doctor and they're just not getting them healthy, well, all right, let me at least look at other healthier options out there. Yeah, but don't, we know that doctors aren't trained to cure anything. They're trained to treat, not... Yes, <gasps> yeah, I'm so... Yes, I'm so glad you said that. Um, I, I want the viewers to think about this. If you guys have say high blood pressure or diabetes. Did your doc say here, try this, I'll try this like you're a guinea pig, mm -hmm. try this. I will treat you as if it's like a trick or treat. Try this, the doctor's order. And well, you know what? On the way out, book that appointment for next week where we check your blood pressure. Yeah, we'll squeeze you in. You know what he just did? Just gave himself a nice, quick, easy visit for next week to check your blood pressure. But could he have said, you know what, Elaine, if you watch your salt and you drop five pounds, maybe you won't need that blood pressure pill. Yeah. And let's go over diet. Do they do that? So how many of you out there are on blood pressure pills or pills for sugars, you know, your diabetes? And did your healthcare provider really go into what can help you prevent needing that medication and how to control it with diet? And if not, they probably sold you a quick, easy visit. One, for two reasons. One, they're not trained to. <laughs> and two is it's a lot quicker to hear, say, take this pill, I'll see you next week, because they're getting repeat business. Yeah. And then that doctor is going to see you every month. And then come on in, get some blood work. Oh, come back for the results. We'll go over them. I'll refill your prescription then. He just got you dependent on coming back monthly for visits. So when people say, I'm healthy, I go to the doctor every month. I don't think you're healthy if you're needing to go to the doctor every month. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like people, they're, they're so trained wrong, but the society trained us that way. Yeah, absolutely. The big pharma funding the, the medical schools is where it all changed, isn't it? Yes. But, um, people say, you know, people say to me, oh, yes, I, I have a healthy diet. And when, when I get them to keep a food diary and you see it, it's horrendous. Absolutely mm -hmm. horrendous. People and have no idea. Yes, it's like this. If big, well, I don't, I've got to watch these words here because <laughs> I don't know where this is streaming. But if the big manufacturers of these drugs um, came up with the, the cure for the big C, the, it would put them all out of business. Yeah. And the same for the charities as well. I won't raise money for the charities for research or anything like that because no. their marketing budget is bigger yes. than the national debt in some countries. And, and it's so, they yes. Don't want cure. Yes. And it's so crazy. You see, I get my clients, this is the main difference between a lot of healthcare providers and myself. And I don't want to say doctors because I don't want to generalize because there's really good ones out there. But the doctor, first of all, they give you an order. You do this, you do that, right? It's called a doctor's order here. I don't do that. I want to give you, Eileen, all of the decisions so you can make a truly informed decision, you know, so you can choose. So that's my job is to, I feel, to educate my clients of all the decisions, the prescriptions, the healthier options, and then let them decide what's best for them. So when I, you know, when the a lot of people go to the doctor and the doctor doesn't know about the healthier options I'm using, how to activate genetic pathways and increase our own body's production of antioxidants and make more healthy mitochondria that are required for the cells to live and detoxify. When the doctor doesn't know of these things, because one, he's not taught, 
um, he can't give you all of the decisions. So how can you make an informed decision when you go to a traditional doctor that's not aware of these new, healthier, cutting edge options that are out there? So I don't give doctors orders, I inform, I help them choose to make an educated decision. Um, those are the biggest differences. And also I merged several modalities together. A lot of traditional doctors, because I also helped mentor residents and interns as well, as well as the nurses. And they're based on simple algorithms. You have high blood pressure, you take this pill. And I'm like, I look at you as an individual. Okay, Elaine, I know you want some more healthier options. So I'm going to tell you about salt and sodium and things like that. So you know, I, I don't just stick you in an algorithm. I look at you as an individual. And I think that's where society loses it. They're just stuck in the algorithm. If this, do that. If this, do that. And I'm sorry, most people don't fit into an algorithm. They don't. We're so unique and individual that it, no. <laughs> so thank you for letting me go off on that. <laughs> it's, 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 it's the same thing you were saying about the medication um, and, and we're all different each person with a medication will have a different reaction to that medication to the next person. Yes. There is no yes. one size fits all. And um, then the doctors aren't trained in nutrition and we know that nutrition can pretty much fix everything. And that's yes. how our ancestors carried on. You know, it, we've only had this nonsense in the last 150 odd years. Prior to that, yes. um, you know, they, they lived off the land, mother nature, the food was good, the soil was good. And now it's, it's all been poisoned. So we have to take notice of what's going on. Yes. But then the marketing um, is corrupt as well. So mm -hmm. it's difficult for people to know where to go, what, what to do. So where, where, how can people get hold of you, Shana? Oh, awesome. Well, the easiest way is just go to shanamelissa.com. It's spelled like my name here, S-H-A-Y-N-A-M-E-L-I-S-S-A.com. And they can click the events tab to see fire events, future events. They can click the contact tab, follow me everywhere, subscribe to my YouTube channel, my Instagram, my LinkedIn. Uh, you know, um, they can send me an email. I have an upcoming event. Um, get healthy and happy with me, the Biohack MP in 2023. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be, yes, all of my uh, events, most of them now are online. So it's really great. And if somebody's like, well, I don't know what day your course is, if I'm going to be able to make it, they also get replay access. So even though they can catch all the lives, they also have their own individual dashboard with replay access, private community, includes their wellness workbook, a full self-assessment tool where I get to see all their strengths and their weaknesses. And, and that class includes a consultation with me, a private one-on-one. -on -one. So I really get to hone in on what they need. And, you know, when we were talking about the more natural living off the land. That's how I learned all of this was from my grandma who raised me in the seventies about watching her eat a banana for her potassium. She wasn't popping a potassium pill, right? She was eating low salt foods. And sometimes we just need to go back to basics. And, you know, I think another thing is I kind of, when I do what's best for the patient, like a traditional doctor just prescribes you a prescription, more of the alternative docs sometimes think you never need a prescription or a test. <laughs> and I'm kind of in the middle. Like I look at you holistically, body, mind, spirit, cellular level. I look for a more natural pathic approach when possible means if I can give you something plant-based and more natural, I will. And I kind of merge that with um, what they call functional medicine. But to me, functional medicine is kind of an oxymoron because if you attack the function, the root cause of the problem, you usually don't need the medications, right? So I don't know why they call it functional medicine. And I've been practicing it before there ever was a school of functional medicine here. <laughs> um, it's, it's such an oxymoron. So I merged those modalities with biohacking to actually activate your genes and your genetic pathways. So your own body can do what it used to do and was meant to do. You know, before, before we have these health issues, we used to produce our own antioxidants, right? Our own defenses to keep us healthy. And we used to make more mitochondria and we used to produce more collagen. And when we get older, we stop producing all of those good defenses. And that's when all these illnesses set in. 
we can now rev up our body's own defenses like we used to make more antioxidants, make more mitochondria, produce more building blocks of collagen. Because I believe those are, and get rid of the toxins that are becoming toxic in our bodies. I believe when I attack those root causes, hundreds of illnesses are linked to those. You know, if you look at them all, the, everything from pain to heart disease, cancer, diabetes, it's all linked to free radicals, oxidative stress, inflammation, mitochondria malfunctioning, mitochondria dying off, and our collagen depletions, you know? Yeah, it's not rocket science, but for somebody who didn't know anything about what you've just said, it it would sound like rocket science. Yes. I'm just listening to... um. I, I, I devour two or three books a week. Sometimes they're, they're um, general education books, but very often they're health books. And I'm, the one I'm on at the moment is called Metabolical by Dr. Robert Lustig. And he's the, the sugar guru. Um, he's a retired endocrinologist, a retired pediatric endocrinologist that couldn't say all this stuff while he was practicing. And he now, now is stepped outside. He can say things that he couldn't say previously on how the pharma companies you know, particularly in the 70s, 80s, whatever, with smoothing the doctors and sending them on um, yeah. fancy, fancy conferences in far-flung places. And, you know, oh, yes, bring your wife with you and, you know, you can go snorkeling yeah. or whatever. So Dr. Robert Lustig um, is a big, big, um, what do you call, advocate um, against sugar and all the places sugar is hidden. And his, his book title is Metabolical. So it's metabolic and diabolical mixed together. Um, so yeah, very, very interesting, that one. That's nice. I used to work at Endo also. And they the, the doc I work for really didn't go too much into diet. They would come in with their donut bag. <laughs> and I'm like, I just, I can't understand. This is like, I don't know. I'm sure you heard of that drug Oxy, right? <laughs> and the one that's really addicting here and in the US, they're switching over when they get too hooked on it, they're switching to heroin. And I remember when those drug reps would come in and say, oh, it's not addicting and all this. And I'm like, yeah, right. And then we would later find out that that company tried to buy stock in, I don't want to say the name of the other one, <laughs> but the other company which was the antidote. Right. Because but they yeah. were saying if it wasn't addicting, why would that company try to buy stock in the other company to treat the addiction for that drug? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> well, follow the money again, isn't it? It's always followed the money. I was in um, a hospital one time. I was doing a follow up appointment with my situation. And this lady leapt over to me. She said, Elaine, Elaine, hello. It's lovely to meet you in person. She was a Facebook person that had asked me for some guidance on oh. on so anyway we got her to the point where she was completely clear so um I said oh you're looking really pleased with yourself um you know she, she, she said yes she said I've just signed up to chemotherapy um they've I said well why on earth did you do that I said you were clear so she said well they've told me if I sign up the hospital gets money and then that money can help other people and she was a deeply religious person so she thought she was doing good and then a few months later she contacted me in a terrible state and now she's dead. So um, go figure, you know, people get frightened and coerced into things that are really, really inappropriate. It's and so this is, it is, it's so sad. You see, um, when I worked in traditional medicine, they were trained, book your appointment on the way out. When do you want to see me again? When do you want to yeah. see me again? When do you want to see me again? And now when my clients see me, they're like, when do you want to see me again? I'm like, oh, well, you're going to be feeling better soon. And they're like, but wait, yeah. I, I want to see you. And I'm like, okay, if you miss me, you know, you can schedule something for next month because they're so used to being dependent upon going to the doctor for that prescription that they need. And yeah. here when they're running low, the doctor says, no, you need to come in for a visit. Even if it was, they just saw him a month ago and no, you need to come in for the results now. Wait, the results are all normal, but you're making that person come in yeah. to tell them they're all normal when they were just in last month. So it seems like like such a money maker that when clients are new to me they're like what like I don't need to come back next month I go well I don't mind you know a tweak like they'd rather come and see me knowing they're healthy as a tune-up to get that reassurance and I'm fine with that but I will not keep them dependent upon me and I felt like traditional medicine was just keeping them sick and dependent upon me I'd rather you go get better and say oh my god I miss Shana can I come back and see you this month 
And, you know, I, I have, I have patients like that. They're like, I just want to come and make sure everything's okay. I'm like, okay, fine. <laughs> yeah. But I, I don't, I don't trap them to come and see me, you know, or keep them sick. This was a movie years ago. I don't know if you ever saw it called misery. I think the nurse broke the guy's legs to keep him sick. So he would be dependent upon her. <laughs> or if you ever heard of a firefighter that lit a fire to put it mm -hmm. out to be the hero. Yeah. It's, it's craziness. It, it, it really is. I, you know, there's, I do what's best for the client. A lot of times it's not the medications. It's really not, but if they need it, I'm not opposed to giving it to them. So, you know, I, I think that's where it sets me apart from a lot of other providers. They're either one extreme or the other. And, um, hmm. Okay, I said this, <laughs> but you know, I I don't want to keep them dependent. I don't. I want to make them better. And you know, it's like that animal. You set it free, and maybe it'll just come back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I do the same thing. So I have a I have a, a program which uh, um, has four parts to it, and I look at the behavior. I look at the 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 biohacking um, metabolic side of things. I do hair analysis, blood analysis. So those nice. give me a full picture so we then find the root cause of what the problem is and then I can say will you do this or that you know with your diet and nutrition yes. etc so um and then they say at the end you know well, well what do we do now so each of when each of the results come back I have a, a session with them online and then they say well you know what happens now I say well you're good to go you've well really really I said well you know what to do you know how to eat now you know you don't need this med or whatever you know they've decided i don't say to, to come off meds it's that that's their choice of course um yes. but the majority of them do you know instead of warfarin and um um the heart meds you know take cayenne pepper you know take turmeric to to reduce the the inflammation you know there's just so many things that you can do um to to that you know that's out there in mother nature well, I think yeah. that's why now I'm more having uh, moving towards the retainer because people mm -hmm. want me throughout the year where they're like, they just want a little tune up here. They want to tune mm -hmm. up there and they need some reassurance or, you know, I don't give them too much information at once. So I'll give you a little bit, then, you know, it will move forward. So I think my practice is more moving towards an annual retainer. This way they have me throughout the year, throughout the quarter, you know, like, Hey, you want to try for a quarter first, you know, a three month trial, like a gym membership. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then they, then they can do that, you know, cause I'm, I'm there for them 24 seven. I am. And, um, I just, I love what I do. And I just, you know, the modern medicine, I just, I don't want to keep them sick and dependent on me. I want to get them better so people need to retrain their brain you know they're yeah. so used to you know um it was like this if the doctor doesn't know what to do for you he sends you to the specialist but now if you go to the specialist and you're not getting better you think that's the last stop but here it's not because people aren't aware of people like me so for instance when i was going to the heart doctor and i'm like wow i'm in a heart failure and he can't help me right he he says no the meds i said are the meds or the exercise right the treadmill walking is either of that going to stop the progression no is either of it going to slow down the progression no I'm like, what am I doing here? Like, in all honesty, it's not stopping the progression. It's not slowing it down. It's not reversing it. Those were the three main things I asked. I'm like, what's the point? So I think it's important that, you know, they, they realize if they go to the specialist, specialist isn't getting them better. They think that's the last stop, but it's not. Like for me, I'm like, wait, we can send, uh, at the time we weren't sending, well, Richard Branson wasn't sending people to outer space yet. So I can't say that, but it's like if the specialist isn't making you get better, you need to think of another option. But people think the specialist is the last resort. They don't realize like, man, maybe I'll try a different specialist. Maybe I'll try someone that does alternatives, somebody that does newer techniques. So for me in full-blown heart failure, imagine how many people don't have the medical experience I do that are like, fine, he's the specialist. He's got to know what's best for me. I'm just going to listen to him. I'm not going to listen to, you know, a nurse. <laughs> and that's craziness because... When that doctor told me 95%, 95 out of every 100 people, he could not stop the progression. He could not reverse it. He could not make a difference in them. I'm like, what's the point in all that, you know? Yeah. So I think it's important. Yeah, it's important for people to know if their healthcare specialist isn't making them better, 
they can look at, a, get a second opinion, get a third opinion, come reach out to me, you know, because I'm edu educating a lot of the doctors and specialists. They're not aware of how to activate genes, how to rev up production of your own good defenses, how to really get rid of these toxins that I, I'm now educating a lot of the doctors and a lot of the specialists, you know, so we need to retrain our brain thinking sometimes the specialist knows best, you know. I, I once had a specialist uh, report me to the trading standards um, in the UK because um, I was recommending a, a supplement and he thought it was snake oil and you know th this that and the other so he's at he's at the local hospital and um, he he was really really upset with me anyway I had a visit and they they took a pot of this supplement away took it to their laboratory somewhere I've got a letter saying it's perfectly fine just kind of carry on and um, so I ran, I was running cardiovascular um, clinics at the time and testing people for arterial stiffness and ventral pressure readings and that kind of thing. And um, nice. one of the clients, nearly all my clients went off their, their blood meds. Um, and one of them, he was due to have a five way. I didn't realize there was such a thing as a five way heart um, uh, surgery. I thought there was only four. But anyway, he, he was due. He was told a five way. Anyway, he came to see me, I checked him out, gave him the supplement and other, other things and, and recommendations of lifestyle. And to this day, the man's never had surgery. And yet he was he was due to have this major, major, really serious operation. That is awesome. And I've I've had a lot of success stories too. And it sometimes baffles the modern medicine people. They're like, whoa, what'd she do? Like, I have to know about that. You know, like you, like I've I've had clients that were in stage four that are in full remission. I've had like yeah, me. Like me. Like yes, me, like yeah, and I beat it in three months. That's awesome. And I think like when I had my when I was diagnosed with my autoimmune problems, that was in the start of this lethal pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. Now I look at the patients when I did traditional medicine, if they had autoimmune problems, they went to the rheumatologist here and the rheumatologist gives them meds to weaken their immune system. And then when they don't work, they give them a higher dose and a higher dose and the higher and higher dose, you get more side effects, interactions. And then when that doesn't, isn't enough, they add on the prednisone, which is the steroids. And now, okay, so now they have a weaker immune system. Now you're adding on steroids, which weakens their immune system more. Now the steroids also raises their weight, which raises their blood pressure, their sugars, right? Thins their bones, gets them depressed. Um, and, and then there's still, and then when I would see those autoimmune patients that were doing the traditional treatments, they would come in all the time, sick, sick again, sick longer, sick more severe than anyone else. And so when I was diagnosed, right, I'm like, uh, no, thanks. <laughs> I'm like, uh-uh, right? And, and the doctors sometimes get mad. I'm like, I don't care. This is my life. Are you going to give me medications during the height of a lethal pandemic to weaken my immune system and thin my bones and make me fat or raise my sugars and raise my blood pressure and make me sad like all my patients were that did traditional treatment? I'm like, uh, no. And now, fast forward, since I'm activating my genes and revving up my own good defenses, I have no signs of any autoimmune disorders at all whatsoever. And my bones are good, my weight's ideal, my sugars are good, my blood pressure is good. So, I mean, if you look at the people that are treated traditionally for autoimmune and how I'm treated, and look at the outcomes, <laughs> right? <laughs> I think that says enough. Yeah, absolutely. And when when people come to me they say they've been sent home or i might get a phone call from a family member saying oh you know uncle fred's been sent home they can't do anything more for him and they're all sad and i, I say brilliant now you can start really getting well now you're not you know kowtowing to what you're what you're being told and not being frightened let's let's mm. you know let's crack on and we do but it depends upon the amount of effort that people are prepared to put in because not everybody is prepared to put the work in are they no. And that's where you, you have to understand what's best for the client. You know, if I know um, my client, I don't I don't typically have this client, but when I worked in endocrinology, you would have that patient that's 100 pounds overweight coming in with the donuts. Right. <laughs> and, you know, like uh, you can only talk so much <laughs> about diet. <laughs> so maybe that person needs the traditional medication, you know, like um, but it's just. 
I think our society, we're so trained, listen to the doctor, listen to the doctor, listen to the doctor. But if that doctor is not making you better, and he's not making you feel good, maybe you need to listen to somebody else, you know? And um, I just, uh, you know, I, I'm just sick of traditional medicine, keeping them sick. And we call it, I like to call it profits over patients. Mm, yeah. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm. Hey ho, right, remind us of your website again, Shana. Sure. It's shanamelissa.com, S H A Y N A M E L I S S A dot com. And there they can, like I said, they can see my get recordings of prior events, future, you know, register for like Get Healthy and Happy with Me in 2023. Um, they can follow me everywhere YouTube, Instagram, LinkedIn. They can contact me under the contact tab. They can, um, Check out how to get my books or how to become an author in my next book, Tragedies to Triumphs. And um, I, I, I thank you so much. Now, you're in Portugal. Isn't um, this cool technology, yeah. right? I'm here in like Long Island, New York. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Great you. Man. And um, Yes. And oh, if they want to check out my article, I don't know, maybe when this publishes, we can just drop a link. The one that just uh, published last week in Authority Magazine. Yeah. They can, yeah, on the article, they can read it. They can listen to the audio version of it. Or there's even a three minute mini, mini movie that explains uh, the five lifestyle tweaks to alleviate chronic pain. Very good. Very good. So that's Authority Magazine. Yes, yes. Marvelous. I'm sure that will be, um, we'll be able to look at that as well. We'll put it in the and, show. Yeah, that'd be awesome. And actually, that magazine, um, that article, Authority looks at the authority figure in that topic. And because I had excruciating pain between autoimmune, dislocated jaw, trigeminal neuralgia, excruciating nerve pain, and I have no pain anymore, and I'm not on any medications. Between that and me being in the medical field for three years, they looked at me as the authority on the pain. And I can honestly say that, check this out, there was two pain management doctors that worked together, right? One sees that I never go there for any medications and his, our mutual clients are all better and don't have to go anymore for medicine. And he's like, oh my God, what are you doing? I have to know about that. And the other one thinks maybe in his head that he's losing money because we're not coming in as often. <laughs> so, and it's so sad. And the two doctors have since split. One does the healthier options and one still keeps people sick coming back every month. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah go figure go figure right <laughs> lovely speaking with you shane and melissa lovely to yes, uh, spend you. time with you today and uh, we'll put your contact details in the show notes and don't forget listeners to subscribe and um press the black bell on the uh the, the uh, youtube thing of me i always forget to to say that so thank you yes yeah they need to subscribe to your channel so they can listen to all your other episodes no, we're still on about 300 now. So uh, there's quite oh, a few. Oh, wow. We need to reorganize them as well. And they're not, they don't seem to be in a very good organized. They've just kind of happened over the years from when I used to do my radio show. And uh, they just, I think we need to reorganize them somehow. Anyway, thank you again. Yes. Thank you. Bye for now.